Well, let's do this real quick. Let me let me just give the outline, not of npm, but of like what is a proxy server and what is a reverse proxy server, and then you can. How about I do, I, I do that, and then you explain how you use npm as a reverse pro proxy server. Okay. So, if you know what a proxy server is, it sits in front of your computers and um, it will people often use it for like like a firewall is is a um, an example of a regular forward proxy server and uh, you can block offensive websites you can virus control you can do all this kind of stuff and so that is sits between the internet and you your your laptop your pc whatever you're using that's a proxy server and most routers can be considered proxy servers uh so a reverse proxy server is going the other way so uh if you have a server that you want to expose to the internet uh, people uh, will not type in your local IP address to go to your server. Uh, it doesn't work that way. Although at work we did have a funny situation I'll get, I'll get to real quick. Uh, we had uh, a customer server that we were supposed to uh, put files on and uh, they had their own proprietary web interface and stuff and we were aim unable to reach it because their, their their certificate had expired and so uh, contact called them was like look we can't get to it uh, your search expired and they said well here's just a direct address and they gave me the uh, local IP address of, the, of their server within their network and said, can you reach it now? And I said, no, that's fucking dumb. How are you even in this position? How do you have a job? Anyway, so uh, the, what the reverse proxy does is it sits between your server and the internet. And it has a lot of different functions, but the main one is just getting requests from people that are accessing your server intersecting those requests and most people will use a type of um, security uh, in the form of a what's called an SSL cert uh, and what that does is make sure that there is no what's called a MIM attack man in the middle so it encrypts your traffic from the client to the server and from the server to the client and uh, the proxy handles all that the reverse proxy handles that uh, reverse proxies can also do uh, what's called load balancing where if you ha have you know like if you're doing a pot real popular website or a popular uh, web application or stuff that gets all kinds of hits every day it can handle all that incoming traffic and balance it out so you're not getting DDoS basically it also protects against DDoS and uh, if you turn on uh, certain options you can have caching as well to where the uh, content that you're serving out is cached on the proxy itself instead of pulled from the server every single time so you get faster response time uh, to people that are accessing whatever's on your server and things like that so that's what the purpose of a reverse proxy is. And usually you have a, I guess Honky can go into the way you use DNS with a reverse proxy and how uh, you access a server without having to type in a IP address, in other words. Yeah, so you also have to bear with me a little bit because I haven't physically done this in a while, so I'm working straight off of memory. Um, let's see, let's go to, uh, and I'll also add that there's, 
lots of web servers you can use as a proxy. And Apache's popular, Nginx is popular, and what Honky's going to talk about is a um, it's basically kind of a, like a user interface uh, for Nginx to use it as a web proxy. So I use DYNU DNS, and this is for lugcast.mywire.org, the same one I use for like the show notes and whatnot. So I go to DNS records, you can see all the ones I've set up there. Uh, these are still from back when I was trying to do the uh, the um, email server. So I still have a, like a AAA. Uh, there's my next cloud show notes and whatnot. So for this, I figured we'd set up like a uh, for the stable diffusion because I have something running right now. So during the show, I actually got stable diffusion up and running, albeit probably temporarily. So we'll call it diffusion. And for those that are just listening. Uh, Honky is has his uh, DNS uh, web interface open, and he's typing a domain name. Can is I thought I was sharing my screen. Am I not sharing my screen? No, but I mean, some people don't watch it. It's it's a oh, podcast. Oh, right. Yeah, I forgot those people. <laughs> some people just listen. Oh, ah, ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I forgot about it. It's an audio podcast as well. Yeah, so I opened you know up that? the DNS. Uh, so in the in the node name part, I would put it in the name that I want to put in. So uh, example would be like uh, for the show notes, my my the link for the show notes would be uh, show notes dot dot org. But all I have really got to put into here. Here is just the, the first part of it. Uh, whatever you put into that fir- into the first part, the node name should be uh, w- the way it starts off. So I put in diffusion for stable diffusion. So to get to there, I should just go to um, diffusion.lugcast.mywire.org. And then I put in the, it's going to be just a regular A record. And then I put in the IP address for um, basically my house. Um, so hit add new record. And oh snap! No, 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 no. <laughs> Do I have too many have, records? You, I wonder if you already have it in there. I wonder if I just have too many records. Oh, you're only allowed so many. Oh, maybe. Okay, so, uh, I think it says you're limited to four per year unless you pay them money. Uh, oh. Okay. I had paid them at one point, and I can't get rid of the stream. Really. So what Hockey's doing is creating a subdomain. Right. I can't get rid of those. I had these, but I don't look like I can get rid of any of these. Well, fuck balls. Why don't you so just I, make uh just go in the npm interface and well just make a new proxy host or something? <laughs> do you have? Can you do that? Make a new proxy host. I mean, do no. you have, a, do you have a, a an A record that that's that's not doesn't currently have a proxy host? I don't think so. I haven't done anything that way. I usually uh-huh. created through uh, this first, okay, and then I would go into here, and then I would uh, set it up. I mean, I can do uh, go to like show notes and just uh, add it. Basically, what I did, what you do to add it is just. Here we go. I put in the uh, the URL you created right there, and uh, put it in as HTTP or H. Once you you can go into and well, what you put in the IP address of the server, uh, the port you want it to go to, and then you can actually do this where you can get a uh, a uh, actually it's in here. What isn't it? Where so you set up uh, set it up, but you can also get. Uh, to the SSL, force SSL, and then get a um, Let's Encrypt. Cert. Yeah. yeah, it'll get a, a Let's Encrypt cert. So if you look under scheme right there, HTTP means the connection from his internal server to the proxy server is unencrypted. So that's fine. That's how most, most servers work. But this Nginx proxy manager allows you to create a SSL cert so that you will have an HTTPS connection. So when somebody connects to it from outside of the local network, it will be encrypted and you will, he's got force SSL on. So if they try to go to HTTP dot whatever, 
it will automatically redirect to HTTPS. I and believe the, that's the, how it works. Yes, yeah. and with this, it also works that um, it uh, it uses Let's Encrypt and it automatically renews the uh, Let's Encrypt cert. Yeah, it's built in. And basically, that's that's all I wound up doing. I mean, I, so you do you you usually uh, do a lot more than that, don't you? Uh, or well, you have in the past, you've, you've had to in the past for uh, other things. Yeah, so um, I did what before Google sold to Squarespace because I was using Google DNS. Uh, I, I was doing it like you did for a while, but then I wanted to create a wildcard cert so that all of my domains would share the same SSL cert. It'll be just an asterisk and then dot and then minix.dev. And uh, that would be the same cert for all subdomains. So that's what, how I had it set up, is that I wouldn't have to create a new SSL cert for each uh, subdomain I created. I would use that same cert. And what's good about using a wildcard cert is nobody can see any of your other subdomains if they search for your root domain. So if they search minix.dev uh, the way I have it now, they're gonna, they're, they'll be able to see what subdomains are associated with minix.dev. With the wildcard cert, they can't see it. They only see the root domain, minix.dev. Uh, but since Google sold to Squarespace, they got rid of wildcard certs unless you paid for the extended uh, service with Squarespace. And so now um, what I'm gonna do is switch to Cloudflare and get back my wildcard cert and then uh, that's what I'm going to do. 